ACC fans, brace yourself. Welcome to the Voice of College Football as we break down every conference, not just the five in the Power Five, but all 10 conferences and how they match up on the field. The results on the field are the only thing that counts here as we break down the 2021 games and factor those into conference ratings and rankings right here at the Voice of College Football. Best discussion, debate, and analysis of the game we all love because of you and your contribution, your participation. So please like the video, share these videos out on social media. Not everyone knows that we're here. Can you believe that? Not everyone knows that the voice of college football is here talking college football with you every day. And if you say, Mark, you didn't go live yesterday, or you didn't go live here, or you didn't go live there, keep in mind, we've got 25 team channels. So we are full throttle all the time covering college football for you. So check out the 25 team channels as well. Let's dive in on the ACC's results here in 2021. Not pretty on the surface, but we go deep below the surface to diagnose and put into context the results. So for the ACC in 2021, a 36 and 24 overall record non-conference play. So that's 60 games played against the other nine conferences. 36-24 36-24 and 24 sounds pretty good, 60% winning percentage, but let's delve deeper. 8-19 and 19 against the Power 5, including Notre Dame. 8-19, and 19, not pretty. 16-4 and four against the group of five. That's over 80%. That's 80% winning percentage there for the ACC against the group of five, and only one slip up against the FCS compared to 9-0 and 0 for the Big 12, 7-2 and 2 for the Pac-12 against the FCS. Power 5 teams should not be losing to FCS teams, but if you do, if you match it up against 12 wins, not a bad ledger there for the ACC. But let's dive into the wins and put them into context. Check out our initial video, the inaugural video that explains our point system. It's based on 130 points being the standard. Think of it this way. There's 130 teams, and if you rank all the teams then each slot is worth one point. Therefore, an even matchup is worth 130 points. And then we work from there in terms of adding points to certain games and deducting points from certain games in regards to the value of the game based on the opponents. So let's get to it right here. And let's look at the 36 games that the ACC won against the other nine conferences. Here we go. Best wins for the ACC look like this. We've got Boston College over Missouri. So that's the number 67 ranked team in the country, BC over number 51, Mizzou. Garnished 146 points for the ACC. As I run through this, and unfortunately I don't have the list in order, I'm looking for the best wins. Duke over Northwestern. That's a team with an 11-point disadvantage in the rankings. Duke over Northwestern right there. Other good wins for the ACC included Duke over Kansas. So you wouldn't have thought Duke posts two of the best wins for the ACC, not in regards to who they beat. They didn't beat the better teams in the country, but based on their standing in the ACC, were able to win up in defeating Northwestern in particular. And also the Kansas win is a like-seeded win of 119 points again. Like seeded teams, 140 points, and we work from there. 130 points, and we work from there. Miami over Appalachian State, a good win for the ACC as well. Louisville over UCF, number 56 team in the country, defeating number 46 in the country right there. Good win for the ACC. North Carolina, Georgia State, good win for the ACC to a certain extent, although you would assume that UNC out of the ACC would beat a Sunbelt team that's mid-level at 8-5. and five. Other decent wins for the ACC include Wake Forest defeating a 9-4 and four Army team. We also see Clemson over South Carolina. The Gamecocks not much regarded earlier in the season, but finished 7-6 and six with a bowl win. So a number 16 Clemson over number 39 South Carolina. There you see also with uh, Syracuse defeating Liberty, decent win for the ACC. North Carolina State with a win uh, over three opponents that don't garnish a whole lot of wins or weight to those games right there for the ACC. 
and Pitt defeated Tennessee. Tennessee rose to all the all the way to number 36 in the final rankings here at the Voice of College Football. Pitt at number 13, so decent win for the ACC there. And there you see on down the list, including Virginia over Illinois. The FCS wins 10 points for the Power 5 team defeating an FCS team. So those are the 36 wins. Keep in mind that the ACC, again, only went 8-19 and 19 against the Power 5, 16-4 and four against the Group of Five, and 12-1 and one against the FCS. Now let's check out the losses for the ACC. The ones that really hurt here are the FCS losses. Jacksonville State, shame on you, Florida State, losing to Jacksonville State, negative 200 points. So a Power 5 losing to an FCS. So all the rest of these games are based on the rankings. I did not rank the FCS teams. It's a straight 10-point gain for the Power 5 team that defeats an FCS, but it's a 200-point loss. For the Power Five. So these are negative points against the ACC in losing these games. Rutgers beat Syracuse. So that's a 133 point deduction for the ACC. There you see North Carolina State is the 23rd ranked team in the country, losing to Mississippi State 12 spots lower. So that's a 142 point loss for the ACC right there. Western Michigan and Pitt. This became a big loss for the ACC, as you can see right there, at 197 points. Pitt was the 13th-ranked team in the country when all was said and done. Western Michigan at number 80, 197-point loss for Pitt and the ACC. West Virginia, Virginia Tech, there you see our standard of 130. That's a 129 game. Makes total sense there. As West Virginia was ranked 57, Virginia Tech at 58, 129 point loss for the ACC right there. Maryland over Virginia Tech, substantial loss for the ACC. Charlotte, group of five. So we gave Duke a little credit in winning a couple games out of conference for the ACC against Power Five opponents, but they lost to Charlotte. Not a good group of five. Number 107 in our Voice of College Football rankings. BYU over Virginia. Really high-scoring, interesting game there out of conference with Virginia losing and losing 102 points for the ACC. Air Force Louisville in a bowl game, 117-point loss. Georgia Clemson, the big game of the non-conference season coming into the season. That was the game that everyone pointed to. Georgia won the national championship. Clemson finished at number 16 in our Voice of College Football 1 through 130 rankings. Do the math. Even game is 130. Number one beats number 16. That's 15 point difference. Take off the 15 points from 130. It's a 115 point loss for the ACC, Georgia over Clemson. And there you see the rest of the results. Interesting non conference games throughout the ACC. They do play a ton of non conference games because they got 14 teams, first and foremost. And then you got to credit the ACC because all those teams in the Atlantic Division meaning Florida State, meaning Clemson, also Louisville and Georgia Tech. They play teams in the SEC every year. Georgia, South Carolina, Kentucky, and also Florida. So they match up against those teams, and then they typically also schedule another game. So Louisville played Kentucky, but they also played Ole Miss, and they also played Central Florida. So Louisville with a tough non-conference schedule. So at least the ACC gets out there and plays non-conference games against uh, the SEC and also against Notre Dame, five games against Notre Dame. And, of course, the ACC lost all five against the Irish. Louisville took it on the chin against Kentucky, Ole Miss, and Air Force in the bowl game, losing 117 points. As you see the rest of the results, of course, Bama-Miami, a big non-conference game for the ACC as well. Miami falls to both Bama and Michigan State. Not good for the ACC, but those are two of the top eight teams in the country talking Bama and Michigan State. So the point totals are not out of hand at 95 and 89. Again, Notre Dame, you see them with victories throughout um, the ACC schedule with five of them. Pitt lost another game again, of course, in the Peach Bowl to Michigan State right there. So when we add it all up, 36 and 24 for the ACC, look at the wins total. So you Add all the point total for the wins, add the point totals for the losses for the ACC as well. And this is the final score right here for the ACC. 2,214 points for the wins, 2,588 points for the losses, 
I've yet to add it up, so I'm going to have to do it right here. It's a negative 374 points for the ACC. What in the heck, Mark, does that mean? Negative 374. Doesn't mean anything right this second. We'll have to go through all the conferences, check out the video on the Big 12 and also the Pac-12. And of course, you got to get caught up on our rating system. So check out the inaugural video. It's down in the description section below in which we explain our point system right here, the Voice of College Football. Help us build the channel. This is a discussion that we have together talking college football with you every day. 25 team channels. Goodness gracious. And you ACC fans, consider we've got a Miami, Clemson, Florida State, North Carolina, and Virginia Tech channels. And we've got Florida State and Miami live streams every week. And with the help of our guys, Mike McDaniel and Paul Van Wagner, Virginia Tech shows on a fairly regular basis as well. Right here at the Voice of College Football. Lock it in, and we will see you next time with the SEC.